So I've got this race timer from Swan and Edgar. Help me if I actually hold it the right way round and explain how the slide rule function on a watch works. Key to this is that 10 reference point in red. You place that 10 on the outer bezel next to the multiplier. Let's say it's going to be 50 in this particular case. We place the 10 on the 50. And let's say we're going to do 50 times 25 as a simple calculation. So turn to 25 there and you'll see that underneath the 25, 1250, which is the correct answer, roughly at least, to the slide rule calculation. I mean, these calculations are, of course, dependent on decimal places and you need to know where to place the decimal point. And that was also true at school when I had a slide rule at school. You've got also kilometers here and you can work out how kilometers can be transferred into miles. So 40 kilometers and how much is 40 kilometers in miles? Well, you've got a choice here of statute miles and nautical miles. The nautical miles associated with knots and the statute miles associated with everything else. Now, 25 statute miles or 22 nautical miles. So the final party trick on this watch depends on that tiny triangle between the nautical and statute miles. And this enables you to work out how many seconds it will take for an aircraft to reach its destination, assuming it's traveling at a particular speed. So in this case, let's just set this to 150 miles an hour. And we have 200 miles to run. So how many seconds is that going to take? The answer is 480 seconds. And as I say, you have to know where to place the decimal point. If it was two miles to run, it would be 48 seconds. So that's what pilots use this type of watch for. Originally invented in 1952, reprised by Swan and Edgar on this race counter watch. And I hope that's a simple explanation about how slide rule watches work.